Noggin and Blink is off and it's that time of the year again. It's Ipswich Cup time. Where, it's out there where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. And joining me is three-time Premiership winning jockey and Brisbane Premiership winning jockey Larry Cassie in Ipswich Cup Day. What a day it's going to be. Yeah, Ipswich Cup Day. It's, a, it's the biggest provincial race meet in Queensland has and it's always an absolute huge day. Big crowds, lots of drink, lots of pretty girls and what a day. What more could you want at the races? And also joining me is big time footy coach and form analyst Ben Perkins. Welcome, Ben. Jesse, how out thou? I bet you've got uh, a f an interesting story for us uh, to tell the viewers out there. Well, many years ago, it was Ipswich Cup Day. It was Eyeliner Stakes Day. One of my favourite all time horses was a horse called Atropine, trained <laughs> by Ted Cameron. I went there, I took 10 to 1. I had so much money in my pockets after that race. When it won, I could have got a helicopter home. And the very next year, I left the race scentless after race five and I hitchhiked home. All right. <laughs> Life on the punt. <laughs> and then, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of action out there at Ipswich and uh, it's not going to happen if you follow our selections on the show. Now, a quick, uh, I've got a few Cheerios there for all our winners and also we've got plenty of giveaways. First of all, we've got tickets to the Titans and Storm game next uh, Monday the 24th at 7pm. So if you're keen to get to that game, just send us an email at info at blinkersoff.com.au. As well, thanks to the Flemington Racecourse and the VRC, Kendall Tracy down there. We've got loads of double passes for the David Burke uh, Provincial Plate Day. So send us an email or follow us on Twitter and you'll be in the chance uh, to win those tickets. But a quick cheerio to all our congratulations to our winners over the uh, last six shows. We've got, first of all, we thank the BRC and Darren Condon out there. And uh, we'd like to congratulate Peter Adley, Brett Hunter, Lachlan Brown, Amber, um, Tim Williams, uh, the winners out up here for those tickets out to the BRC race course. Uh, Titans tickets winner, we'd like to thank the Titans, uh, Adam Gardini, Amber Hegney there, and like to congratulate Ian Brady and um, Kim Hayes for winning those tickets. And uh, from emails, they had a great day out there. And, uh, for viewers out there, it's definitely uh, send us an email. It's well worth winning these tickets to get out there for the Titans and the Storm game. As well, down in Melbourne, for our Melbourne viewers, we'd like to uh, congratulate Liz Danko, Jamie Loudon, Jason King, Adam Grantham, oh, he's from Port Augusta, Sue Cassidy, David Plant, Simon Barber and Adrian Bez. Congratulations to all those winners over the show. Now, as well, don't forget to send us in a link, uh, an email for the competition for the Mackay Beach Horse Racing Festival up there in Mackay. And remember that uh, Malcolm Johnson's going to be there, Dave, Damien Oliver, uh, Greg Radley from Sky, and loads more of people. So uh, it's going to be well worth winning. So send us an email. Uh, go on the website, blingersoff.com.au. Send us, uh, uh, enter the competition link on there and send us an email. Right, that's enough of the mumble jumble. Let's get into it and review race six, the gay, the racing world, gay Waterhouse classic. Ben, have you found one for us? Well, I like number three classics. Uh, loves a heavy track, goes very, very well second up. And I've got, I think, are you riding this horse, Larry? Yeah, I am. Thanks, Ben. So well, I'm, I'm glad you like it. Well, I'm telling you, Larry, <laughs> I've got a my little mate up in the stand there. If you feel a little, a little red <laughs> laser light on you, don't let me down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, a classic. It looks like it'll handle the wet too. Oh, it loves the wet and very good second up as well. Now, number nine here, doubtfully, this is a real swimmer. It'll get back a bit in the run, uh, but loves a wet track. I am working on a, uh, a, a heavy track, probably a heavy eight, uh, or a, at worst, or at best, a slow seven, just, I reckon. Just how you were talking about the wetness, Larry, we were talking about Ipswich track. It handles the, the rain quite well. Yeah, it does, Jess. Um, Ipswich um, track is probably one of the best surfaces in Queensland at the moment. It's got, it's got a great grass cover, and it... it because we're because we're on a new surface on the inside where it hasn't raced been raced on for probably six weeks um i think you're going to find that it's going to really cope with whatever rain we get yeah oh well, there you go punters uh, classics what else do you like there ben well i've got number four here shiny rose it's three times on a slow track uh it's been placed uh run second every time so it, it should get a reasonably good run in the race. And now number 16 here, Love for Ransom. Like, it, it's going to get back, but last time it got back, uh, it would have been in the finish had it got a, a clear crack at him. Yeah. It just went all the way to the line for the last 150-odd metres. Yeah. Um, 
So it's a big query. So I've gone 6, 9, 14, 4 and 16. And I want you to win, Larry. <laughs> well, let's hope, let's hope, Ben, I can get a ride home in your helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I'd love a ride out of this switch uh, at the end because I won't be getting out of the car park too quickly. Now, myself, I like number two here, Bound to Blush, Barrier 5. I do have my queries about the weight. It's my only issue. I think it's probably the best horse in the race. It's on the improve. And the other horse that uh, the main danger is number 11 here, Peron. It has had, uh, it's very lightly raced, six starts, five wins. I like it. Uh, it'll be very hard to beat from Barry Six, Michael, Michael Carl on board. And number three, uh, <coughs> Classics, Larry's Mount, it'll be thereabouts. Again, the 57 on a, on a heavy service, if it is heavy, even slow, it is a query. Uh, if it gets a good run in transit, it'll be very hard to beat. And I'm throwing in number seven, City of Song from the Bjorn Baker down in Sydney Horse. So I'm going two, 11, three and seven. Now, we've got a few jockey challenges coming up and right now we're gonna take a look at Rick McMahon zipping around the Kingston Park Raceway track and see how quick Rick McMahon can do the jockey challenge in. McMahon there was flying around the track. He's taken the leaderboard. Larry, you could see the cart moving around. Ricky's pretty competitive. Yeah, he is. He's, um, he's probably been our biggest winner um, over all our uh, seasons. He, he, he won the golf and also the sprint. And, um, no, he ran hit... second in the sprint. Oh, sorry, he ran second Butler. in the sprint. Yeah, Butler he did. Got Butler the won, sorry, Butler, Butler won the sprint. And uh, he's taken... won the squash. Yes, Scrivo won the squash. I ran second. Um, so, I pulled up lane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so he's taken the lead. Uh, I'm about midfield, but uh, the real test comes when the whole 10 of us get on the track. Yeah, that's what we're looking forward to. At the, on the final show, we've got the whole 10 racing around the track. Now coming up on the show, we've also got uh, Titans TV. We also re reviewing, previewing the last three legs of the quad. Okay, we're going to review now the Ipswich Cup over the 21.50, a sort of tricky sort of distance. Quite a closed and closed, open and closed sort of race for my liking. I like here number one, Volovici. I think this horse will be very hard to beat. It's the class horse. It's got 60 kilos, barrier 16. I still think it'll be too good to win this race. Larry, you actually won this race, or you've have you ridden Ginga Dude in the race at all? No, no, I haven't, no. But I've obviously won two Ipswich Cups and... Uh... I'm riding Toppin in the race, who has yep. form round quintessential. Uh, run fourth in the in the uh, Toowoomba Cup last start, but that can be forgiven because that's on the cushion track. Back to the grass, uh, I think he's got a great chance. Just talking about the, the cushion track compared to the to the grass track, how much difference do, can you feel the, the difference of the horse on it? Oh yeah, horses uh, horses feel like they're running at their top the whole way on the cushion track, and um, uh, well. Uh, Toowoomba. Toowoomba will go back to grass, I think, in about another about another four weeks. So that'll oh, be great good. to look forward to next year's Toowoomba and Wheatwood on a, on the grass track. Ben, who do you like in the Ipswich Cup here? Well, I reckon that Viola Ichi number one mm. has got six lengths on this field. I want Larry to be totally wrong about the track condition. I want this track to be cut up and slushy <laughs> because this horse is a swimmer and... I just think it's too good for him. Yeah, I, I, I've got to admit, it's had seven starts at the distance for four wins and two thirds. Wait for age form. Yeah, it's great form I mean, for this topping, race. Stop it. <laughs> 
third to Souls and Itchen, seventh to Souls and Itchen, third to Quintessential. It's been running in group one, group two is group three. I think it's a great bet. All right, now we're going to get up to story of the week. And I was down at the Magic Millions where I was talking with the operations manager there, Paul Knight, discussing the last two weeks of the selling of the Wieners, the Yearlings and the Broodmares. Here we are with Paul Knight in story of the week. Joined by a partner in crime here, Paul Knight from the Magic Million sale. And Paul, after a fortnight of selling, how did the sale end up? Yeah, Jess, it ended up really good, mate. Uh, the first week, the weanlings and the broodmares, that was some, probably some of the strongest trading I've ever seen here in, in May, June at the national sales. It was like it was phenomenal, and that it was really strong. I mean, when you're up in the box, and that you sort of you get a really good feel for how things are going, and and that was that's probably one of the strongest sales. I mean, weanling sales, and that it was hard to, hard to buy, and that uh, for clients. I mean, it was it was really strong, and then the broodmare sale it just kicked off, and uh, it just went from strength to strength. So. I mean, the first week was really good. Uh, the yearlings, I mean, it started, it started off good and that, but it was it was tough in spots, but uh, it went went very good. I mean, it was a big improvement and that, and I mean, the Patnak horses in there certainly boost that catalogue. And then we finished up with the racehorse sales on uh, on Friday, and unfortunately, a few of the few of the horses got withdrawn, but uh, that's the way things go. But I mean, what the horses that were here uh, sold are uh, fantastic. What would you put down the success of the sale this year? Oh, great teamwork by the staff, mate. <laughs> now tell me, you've been selling horses for 20 years now and, 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 and people can get stuck in a bit of emotion. Do you get a few nerves and a few you know, butterflies before a sale? Certainly, mate. You, I do, and that I wonder whether I've got, you've always got things going through your mind, thinking, have I ticked the right bases? Has have I sent catalogues to all the right people? And that have I rung up everybody? And that so yeah, you you go through a lot of uh, a lot of panic and that sort of the week before, and that just making sure every every box is ticked because I mean that's I mean that's our livelihood and that here and that is is selling people's horses and that so you've I mean every horse you don't sell and that you're you're not getting a commission on so I mean you've got to be selling to earn and that so that's our job to to make sure we sell. Overall how did the figures stand up? Uh, the winglings they uh, grossed uh, eight or a bit over 8.5 million dollars and that which wasn't the average was up from 34 to 36 thousand the brood mares went from uh, they grossed 29 and a half million I mean it was just phenomenal three days of selling there uh, the yearlings they grossed over to over 12 and a half million dollars and the racehorses they grossed four and a half million dollars so overall uh, the figures st- stacked up really good it was a very strong week. Who was one of your biggest buyers? Uh, at the Broodmare sale and that, there were probably three big buyers. There's Rosemount Stud uh, from down in Victoria. Uh, uh, they stand Tarak Toff, who we all know well up here. And that. Uh, There was uh, the new Eliza Sun Kingdom partnership. Sun Kingdom is... Yeah, uh, it's a Hong Kong China venture which has bought uh, bought Eliza Park, and so that was a f- they were very strong up here. And Bert Vieira, and that was very very strong up here. He bought oh, I don't know 24, 25 broodmares, spent about 22.2, 2.3 million. So yeah, he was quite strong. I mean, there are other other people that bought ones and twos, and that they were very strong. I mean, Adrian Nickel from BB BBA Island. Sorry, Adrian. Um, he he spent close to a million in that, but he's first time he's bought broodmares out here and then bought new clients to the sale which have never been before, which was fantastic. Well, Paul, it's always great catching up and full of information, full of news. Thanks, Jess. Always always a pleasure to be here. We'll see you in the studio in the next week or two. We'll do. Thanks, Jess. It was a great session over the two weeks down there at the Minions. Uh, one of the strongest sales they've had down there for this time of the year in a long time. Now it's the eyeline of stakes over 1350. A very open race. And uh, Ben, what have you come up with? Well, I'm going for Johnny Wheeler's horse here, Jet Set Lad. Likes the heavy. It's dropping back from the 1600 metres. <clears throat> I think it'll come from midfield. I'll give it a good chance. I'm going to probably leave out number six, Gundy's son now. This track could be too wet for it. And I'm going to put in Mr Armstrong in its place. Uh, number 10 here, Meet George. It's got the fire up Fifi and Tokamak form. I think it's good form. Three runs in. Yeah, I think yeah. it's ready. And look, number 15 here, Dance on Stars, the Gerald Ryan horse. I mean, it's got gate one. If it, <clears throat> if it had gate seven or eight, 
I'd probably put it in to win. But do you think gate one it could get stuck back on the fence there? And yeah, you can do it at switch. Sometimes, um, you know, in inside gate there, you've got to get off the fence and get moving before that home turn. And if you're locked away on the inside, uh, they just keep coming round you and you can still be there at the 200 metre mark. Yeah, well, but tell me this, but on a wet form. surface, if you're on a wet surface, does it... Um, the further you get behind, the harder it is? Well, I suppose one thing, if the track is wet, um, they will fan a little bit more, yeah. um, which will give the horses on the inside a, a bit more chance to get out and get to where they want to be. But the last place you'd want to be is probably on the rail. Well, possibly. You just don't know until the day. You know, yeah. the, maybe the inside could be the best. But historically, Ipswich is when it's wet, you've got to come sweeping down the middle or your history. Larry, you're riding too many reds. Drawn well again. You're drawing the two there. Yeah, he's drawn well. He's he's um he's out of form. He, he's had sort of a he's had a bit of an interrupted preparation. But um, look, I, I know the horse goes better than better than what his form um, shows. And look, he'll he'll run he'll run a nice race. Yeah, no, myself here. I like uh, as we mentioned, dancing on stars. I think it's a great bet, and I'm putting it on top from Metallurgical Morning Captain. I think there's a good good race for this horse, Morning Captain. He's a grade, loves the wet, and Conservatorium for for fourth. But I like dancers on stars. Now we're going to go to a break and straight after it, it's that time of the show again where we're talking sports. Now the talking point of the sports of the week's been State of Origin. And the talking points obviously being Gallon and, and uh, Nady Miles. What do you think of it, Ben? Well, I loved it myself, but... Having seen I backed uh, the Blues win by 13 plus, I didn't like him doing that. They're 12 points up, and he gave himself a chance to get sent off. He gives you keep the referees out of the game when you're in front. Yeah, that's what they do as well. Now, with will the Lions go undefeated? It'd be good if they did, just to get rid of Robbie Deans. Do you think he will go? Yes, I do. Now, AFL talk, Adelaide Crows. Nothing good to say about them. Port, They're big trouble. They'll win this week, Port. Uh, Bombers? Uh, they should beat the Suns by five goals. And the Suns are on the improve. Fantastic. Going really well. Impressive bunch of kids. Can you keep an eye out on Tom Lynch? Got a big future, this kid. And how would you rate Malthouse over the last uh, over the season so far? Well, I thought he made a big error when he made Yaron uh, the sub. At the time, I said, what is Yaron doing as a sub? He's a pace man who can change a game. He should have been on the field from the start. What odds? Mark Williams goes to... The Lady Boys, Melbourne. Well, if the Lady Boys are smart, it'd be a dollar five. And tell me this one last uh, quick thing: uh, Collingwood on the improve? Or... No. Right now, it's Titans TV where we're going to catch up with uh, Jordan Rankin and State of Origin lock Greg Bird in the bowling challenge. Here we are with Titans TV. <laughs> Yeah, right. Here I skip. Let's go. Yeah, that's not a bad. It's going to sit wide still, but. Oh, it's come in. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Is that light? Yeah, it's going to be a bit light. Very light. Right. Yeah. Right. Nice ball today. Settle, 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 settle. Oh. No GCG, but it's a great ball. How's he looking? He looks a bit heavy. Oh no, he's out the back door. That's no good. I've got victory. Birdie showed your talent again in, in another sport. Uh, 2018 Commonwealth Games here on the Gold Coast. Could we see you uh, on the lawn bowls green? I'd say so, mate. I'm, I think I'm going to really uh, start knuckling down in practice. I think I'm going to become a member here at Gold Coast Bowls and Community Club Incorporated. And, um, too, and really, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be retired by then. Uh, and, and really going to set my sights for a position on that team. All right, well, there you go. Clash of the Titans done this week. Greg Bird, the winner. The forwards are coming back. I'll tell you, they're big boys, the, the Titan lads there, and Greg Bird, he's... Uh, it's not one I'd want, to, want him to tackle in a, in a dark lane on a Saturday night. Ben, race nine. 
Open race. Oh, it sure is, but I'm going for the track specialist. Two out of two for Casino Card. Ooh, yeah. Got beaten six lengths by Academus. I reckon that's not too bad you know, for this sort of race. Uh, number six here, My Shabella. Uh, heavy track suits. It's got the form lines behind Sizzling, which yeah, I think is yeah, the other no, good, form, good line. form for this, yeah. Uh, Caliente. The better the track is, the better it goes. It's a nice yeah. horse. Goes very, very well fresh. And General Groove. Do you like General Groove at all? No. Oh, just but go I, eight, but, six, and five. But just one thing, for, just one thing about Caliente it did pull up with the thumps last start. Just be aware of it. It is, it was in the stewards' report. Myself here, I like number eleven here, General Groove. I think it'll be one oh. to beat. I put it on top. I like uh, number twelve, Stolen Kisses, fifteen locks, Legend, and as um, number five, Caliente. But do, uh, like Ben mentioned, do keep an eye on Casino Card, this Casino Prince Philly. It's quite talented and uh, they, they do like a wet surface. So it'll be one to keep an eye out on. Well, that's the wrap up on the, uh, on the Quaddy. Now, don't forget to send us an email for the Titans and Storm tickets game as well for our Melbourne viewers. And if you want to get across from Adelaide for the weekend, our complimentary passes from the VR, from the Victorian Racing Club, the David Burke Provincial Club. Now we're going to go to Tegan Harrison in the Jockey Challenge and then take a look at the leaderboard. So here we are with Tegan Harrison in the Jockey Challenge. Looking at the Jockey Challenge, the betting's moving quite substantially with our fastest on the board, Rick McMahon. We're just going to have a look at the table again and see who is on top. Um, it's quite an open sort of field. Now, Larry, Rick, is Rick's on top. How did you... Um, you're faring up well there in uh, fifth spot. Yeah, I'm about midfield. Two so seconds off the leader there, Rick. Two, two seconds off the lead, but, um, you yeah, know, I've got Michael Carl. Tegan and Paul obviously behind me with, with still Ryan and, and Jim Byrne to come. So um, it all leads down to, to an exciting final when, when we all get on the track, which will be very exciting. Oh, we're looking forward to that. Um, um, there was a few bing, bings and bangs and bumps and shoves going on out there. Well, what, what, what the other boys didn't realise is uh, the fastest time actually starts at the back of the grid. So <laughs> I sort of placed myself nicely in about the middle. Yeah, as they would say, a bit of insider trading going on there. <laughs> Just <maybe>. a small <laughs> bit. <laughs> now, Ben, what is your best for the program? Well, I've got uh, Larry's best health in <laughs> mind here with classics. <laughs> For me, Larry, your best ride, your riding diet? Yeah, well, probably my best ride would be classics, um, as Ben's pointed out. But um, an interesting runner, diet. Uh, I'm, I'm riding him in race five. I actually won the race, the, the last race nine, won on him last year from the outside gate. And he's actually unbeaten at Ipswich from four from four. So very interesting runner. We love horses that have got a track record like that well worth having a few dollars each way on. Now that brings us to an end of the show for another season of Blink Us Off. And remember to send us in an email and take a look at the competition for the Mackay Beach Horse Racing Festival. So join us next week, same place, same time, and bye for now.